series began, we looked at force and the things that act like force. We saw how force causes things to move. We saw how force can be a pull or a push. We saw how it can cause an object to change its direction or its shape. Then we looked at work, which measures exactly what force does. We saw that force alone is not enough, that work is only done when something is moved by force. So electric charge is moved by voltage, an object is moved by force, fluids are moved by pressure, and an object is rotated by torque. But remember that time was not part of the work formula. That is, it doesn't matter how long it takes to do work, if the force and the distance are the same, the amount of work is the same. So if you want to measure how much faster one object moves than another, you're measuring rate. So for example, in a mechanical system, you start out with force. Force times distance is work, and distance over time is rate. Rate, it measures how far an object moves over time. How often something happens over time or how much of something moves over time. The rate at which an object moves from one place to another is its speed. Speed is a unit of distance over a unit of time. In fact, you could think of a speed limit sign as how fast you can move a vehicle, but you could also think of it as a distance that you can drive in one hour. If you drive any farther than that, your rate is too fast. seen the difference between a constant rate and a changing rate or an acceleration. A constant rate covers the same distance for each unit of time. while an acceleration or a deceleration covers a different distance with each unit of time. You can think of an acceleration or deceleration, starting, stopping, as the rate of change or the rate of a rate. Rotational rates can also be constant or changing. The displacement is still a distance, it's just an angular distance. It's represented by theta and could be measured in degrees, radians, or revolutions. A tachometer is a good example of measuring rotational rate. It counts revolutions per minute. 
Mechanical rate can also measure an event or how often something happens over time, such as production rate. When speed is not important, as in the case of fluid, electrical, and thermal systems, rate measures how much moves in a period of time. How much in a fluid system can either be how much mass moves over elapsed time, which is important in cases such as air-to-air -air refueling, or, as in the case of the power dam, how much volume moves over time. In electrical systems, it's very convenient that the ampere also happens to be a rate, the number of coulombs moving past a point every second. Whether we're trying to generate heat or take it away, it's moved from one place to another in thermal systems. How fast the energy moves or the rate of heat flow is not quite as simple because there's four conditions. Temperature difference acts like force to actually move the heat. Surface area makes it easier for the heat to transfer. Thickness is how far it has to go. And thermal conductivity is how easily a material lets heat travel through it. These are the conditions that determine how fast the heat moves. But the thermal rate itself is simply the number of calories or BTUs that were displaced over a period of time. Controlling rate is an extremely important factor in the operation of technology. We constantly have to be aware of how fast a machine operates. If the rate at which fluids are pumped through pipes is not carefully controlled, turbulence can be created, which can either interfere with the flow or do damage to the pipes. Electrically operated machines not only depend on a steady flow of electricity, but the relationship between electrical rate and heat. can spell disaster for equipment and people. Heat can either be a friend or an enemy, depending on what we're trying to do with it. When it's an enemy, it's vitally important to know the rate at which the enemy is moving, so we can keep it at bay. When it's a friend, it's an expensive friend. Heat is a valuable form of energy. It costs a lot to generate heat, and sometimes just as much to remove it. Better up. Just about everything we do involves rate of some kind. How far, how often, how much over time. Take, for example, a baseball game. Now, the ball has to go from the mound to the plate in the shortest possible time. Great one. What? That determines its speed. Then there's how often. For example, how often you swing the bat. Great two. It determines how often you survive in this game. The building itself, the stadium, spends about $8,000 a month on electrical bills. And that's determined by the rate at which electrical charge goes through the lights and all the equipment that operates this place. Then there's the thermal rate, where all the bodies crowd into the stands and they cheer you on to greater heights. Lake three. I guess the only thing I haven't mentioned is fluid rate. But this is a dome stadium and it doesn't rain in a dome stadium. <laughs> this program was produced at the facilities of Telemation Productions and is part of Principles of Technology. A project of state and provincial vocational and technical education agencies in association with the Agency for Instructional Technology and the Center for Occupational Research and Development.
together serving education